I'm going to be talking to you guys about aiming for greatness, how to be able to achieve more in this one year than a lot of people can achieve in their lifetimes. Now, we may have dreams and aspirations of what we want to do, but the thing is, if we don't put a name to it, if we don't like find a way to actually categorize it of what area in your life you're working towards, it's very hard to think about what you're working towards, and it's very hard to track your progress, and it's even harder to look back and think about what is it that you have accomplished in the past six months, right? It's more than just about cutting out the distractions. That's just the first step, all right? Saying no to what doesn't help you is actually going to be the thing that lets you start to focus on what is helping you. When we are in a room full of noise and there's the music playing on the TV and you have the radio going and your phone is pinging out notifications, like you cannot focus on one thing. There's a lot of noise going on, literal noise. Life is the same way. If you are saying yes to everybody and you are not actually putting everything on your calendar because you think that you're doing all right without the calendar and you are not actually remembering to cut people out the right way. Um, you're doing a lot of things that are not really moving the needle forward. You're staying busy and you tell yourself that it's productive, but it's actually not. You're not working effectively and there's a difference. And we have to remember like saying no and cutting people out isn't enough on its own. We need to actually change that. And now that we have all this energy, that we were spending in other areas of our life, we can actually use that and start transferring it towards focusing on what is important to us. And we need to find what that main goal is. So think about what you want to achieve the most. Like, I want everybody here to pause for a minute and think about what you want to achieve the most. It could be losing 10 pounds of fat, building 10 pounds of muscle, stop drinking alcohol every night, getting a certification for your career. Choose one main goal that will make other goals easier getting a new job, learning a new language, like any goal that you want to accomplish, I want you guys to write them down right now. You could have a list of five and then we're going to narrow it down to one. We're going to decide which is the most important one. It could be learning how to meal prep in the kitchen effectively and that way you feel so comfortable in the kitchen that you make all your meals. It could be then the next six months, you want to completely eliminate fast food from your diet that you guys have all the time and you want to be able to be a professional in the kitchen. It could be that you want to run a marathon this year or maybe next year or you want to compete. Anything you want to do, there is a way forward to get there. Like it's not unreasonable if you have a plan of what you're going to do about it. So Alex Hermosi said it best. One of the biggest mistakes I made early on was doing the right thing at the wrong time, not often enough, or not long enough. But what does that mean? Well, let's break it down. We think that we have to be disciplined, and we think that, well, the way that I'm going to be disciplined is by, by waking up in the morning and, and going to the gym, right? But the thing is, like, we forget that the discipline that we're using there is actually going to come from the night before you going to bed on time. So, like, it's the right thing at the wrong time. You have to work on the thing that the front end before your back end gets better. So if you want to get better at meal prep, but every time you're in the kitchen, you feel overwhelmed because you don't have all the ingredients. What you have to focus on is actually getting the ingredients right and creating a grocery list and doing the shopping the right way. And that is what will help you get to a better level of making food in the kitchen. So we focus on the right thing at the wrong time and we don't do it often enough. So more, better, new. When you are trying to work on something, you need to do more of it. Lifting in the gym. If you want to get better at lifting, you have to do more of it. You have to spend more time in the gym. If you want to get better at running, guess what you have to do? More running. As you do that, you will get better. And as you get better, you'll realize, I can do this even better. Which means that you optimize your time even more and more and more. And you start realizing, like, I'm not wasting time when I go to the gym. I'm not wasting time when I'm running because I'm getting better at it. And then you introduce the new. So breaking down our big, like what is a big goal for you that this year you want to achieve? And that could be fitting into a pair of jeans that you haven't fit into in, in five years. That could be fitting into your dress blues. That could be getting a promotion at work, right? But you have to break your goals down into smaller, easy steps. And when I say easy, I don't mean that they have to be completely doable in one day or one week. It just has to be something that you can understand that is going to get you there. So if you have to, if you want to get a certification, what does that mean? It means you have to apply for it. You have to do these certain courses. As you do the courses, you have a test. That's Y and Z. There's different levels to it. 
If you want to lose 10 pounds, first you have to lose one pound, two pounds, three pounds, four pounds, five pounds, so on and so forth, right? And what is it going to take for you to get there? Because if we want to think about this in, in time of a year, right, 12 months or six months, it doesn't happen overnight. But the problem is that we get stuck because we overcomplicate our goal. We tell ourselves, well, I want to lose 20 pounds in the next, you know, three months. And then when we are one and a half months in, we haven't lost five pounds or maybe we have lost five pounds, but we feel like, well, I'm supposed to do 20 in the next month and a half. I'm not going to hit it. And then we feel like we failed when we haven't. It's just that we didn't break it down in steps. We didn't have the clarity of what we're actually working towards. So you're not going to lose 20 pounds overnight, right? Or you're not going to get a new certification in a week. It doesn't work that way. You need to cut it down into easier steps to begin building your momentum. What does that look like? Well, that looks like waking up and going to the gym. That looks like if you're struggling to get past a certain weight, every single check-in, guess what you have to do? The small, easy steps that you have to do to actually get to that weight that you want is to eat and log your five days of meals. That's it. Nothing special. You don't have to have a, a super secret recipe. You just have to follow the meals in the meal plan, and you have to log your food, and you have to eat them. That's it. Now, is it over complicated when you don't feel like you can do it? Yeah, absolutely. But that's all it takes. Is it really hard? No. You look at the meal, you write out the recipe in the app. You actually have all the ingredients in there already. You can make a grocery shopping list in the app. You buy the foods, they get delivered. You follow the recipe, you make the meal, you package it. You have your five days of meals for the next five days, right? Every single day, every single, excuse me, every single day, Getting 10,000 steps. If you want to get 10,000 steps, break that down. Halfway through your day, you should be at least to five to 7,000 steps. Why? Because at the end of the day, typically you're going to be going home. You're going to be doing less walking. Well, if you are doing that and you're noticing that you're not getting your 10,000 steps a day, you can add a 20-minute walk with the family after dinner to be able to get to your 10,000 steps a day and not missing a workout. And see... These little steps right here, when you don't miss your workouts, when you get your steps, when you eat and you log all your five meals, now we can track all the progress you've made and we can stay in momentum. Guess what? It actually does get easier because you realize that it's working. It's working. The work you're doing is working. It's not about getting to that end state. It's about these steps that I'm doing right now, today, it's working. And if you do these steps, like I said, you will achieve more than most do because most people tackle one thing and they feel overwhelmed because they feel like they can't do it. Or they try and stay busy by just adding a bunch of stuff to their plate that isn't important. But you have to be able to set boundaries. You have to be able to take action on the things that actually will produce results. See, I'm a believer that if you have bad habits and you're having trouble getting rid of them, focus on the good habits. Make sure you have so many good habits in your day and you actually effectively plan out your calendar and you put your workouts in there and you put your meal prep and your lunch and your dinner and everything goes in your calendar that you don't leave yourself any space for those bad habits. Like you're not going to go to McDonald's on the way home if your calendar reminds you that you are having dinner with your family and you made freaking lasagna. You're not going to want to have that extra drink of coffee in the morning. If one of your habits in the morning is to prep yourself in the morning, have your routine, make yourself coffee at home so you don't stop at Starbucks and have this 500-calorie drink that you don't even really need. That costs you an arm and a leg. So if you want to work on deleting those bad habits, try focusing so hard on the good habits that you don't have any space or energy left for those bad habits. If you want to quit smoking, stop going outside with your buddies that smoke. Get productive. Do something that you normally don't do at work. Not staying stuck in delusional daydreaming. And what does that mean? It means that if you want to do it, it's not just about, oh, tomorrow or next week or, you know what, next month when I have more time. Like, you're never going to have more time. The time you have right now was chosen by you. So right now, if you're super busy and you feel like you don't have enough time, it's because of what you decided to allow into your life. And if you've allowed it into your life, like it's yours. So like, what can you do? Can you reduce the effort that you give other people so you actually have more time? Or can you increase the effective time that you have and use it the right way? 
I think you can do both. And I think you should do both. Use what you have. You don't need new gear. You don't need a new phone. You don't need a new gym necessarily. If you understand that the things you have available to you right now, that's all you need. You don't have to wait until something presents itself. Like the meal prep that you've been saying you're going to do. Like, I just, I need to buy some Tupperware. Like you have Tupperware at home. Might not be the best, but you have some. Like the gym that you, you want to actually go to and, and be a part of and then actually show up there four or five times a, a week. You keep saying that, oh, well, you know, it's, it's far from home. Um, I, gotta, I, I can't get to it. Like, wake up earlier. Use what you have. And then cut out what you're using as an excuse to take simple actions. Like, cut it out. Simple actions do really produce results. Understanding that putting your phone on do not disturb in the night or sleep mode, as you should, putting on a charger across the room, setting your alarms, and then going to bed and actually going to bed and falling asleep because you watched the sleep optimization module and you understand the principles of like how to fall asleep, making sure there's no lights, making sure that it's nice and cool, making sure that you possibly need to listen to binaural music, making sure that you have eye covers if that helps. Like there's a bunch of different things that you can do that are very simple, very small, that are going to be the reason why the next day, why in the morning, like you're going to wake up with energy. You're going to wake up and you're going to want to attack all the day because you did the small consecutive steps the night before following through it's impossible to assume that you'll be 100 percent motivated every day of the year like i said motivation happens when you have that willpower but willpower is limited we have to use our calendar to block in the actions you need to make progress and then follow through with it follow through with whatever you put on your calendar because if it was important enough you put it on your calendar it's there for a reason and then you have it programmed in there every single week at the same time. Same with the gym. Actually do the meal prep. You look at the meals. You choose the one you want. You do the shopping. Maybe you get the groceries delivered to you. You create the shopping list. You look at the recipes. You make them. Maybe throw on some music. You enjoy it. You're not rushed. Maybe you do it as a family unit. And it helps. You have to like understand. Everything has a very high action threshold initially. Like when you, when you start to go to the gym and you don't know how to use the equipment, it's going to take you a longer time the first time. But eventually, you're going to lower your action threshold. It's going to be automatic for you. You go to the gym. You know where all the machines are. You know how to use them. Bam, 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 bam. Same with meal prep. Once you do it and you get the hang of it, like you have all the recipes because now you don't have to buy the Dijon mustard again because you have that already from the last week. It gets easier and easier and easier. You lower your action threshold. You get better at it. Lower your action threshold in every area of your life. I go to bed in my workout clothes. Actually, I go to bed in shorts that I jump out of my bed in, and I go jump in my ice barrel, right? And then I switch into my workout clothes, and, and then I wear my workout clothes. I go drop off my kids at daycare, and then I go straight to the gym. And then from there, I go to work. So, like, there is no sort of limitation. Like, I'm not going to put on my jeans when I leave to take the kids to, to school or to daycare because then that means I might mentally trick myself into not going to the gym. I'm not going to show up to work in my workout clothes. So lower your action threshold and remind yourself of what you're doing, what's important to you. Use your calendar. Now, if you want to excel in other areas of your life, maybe you want to get a certification, maybe you want to get a promotion, right? Like, you have to understand that anything you can do to make it easier for yourself is going to help you get there. If you're studying for a certain specific test or if you want to learn more about this thing or that thing, like set it as your homepage on your screen. Put it on your uh, settings. I'm sorry. Put it on your homepage on your phone. Set it as one of your goals for the month on your background of your phone that we talked about. Put post-it notes on your bathroom mirror that remind you of what's important to you. Like whatever you want to achieve, you have to focus on so much that it becomes the only priority that you are working towards. Everything else will help you work towards that. But because you've removed so much noise from your life, because you've been okay to say no to parties or events or travel or dating right now, maybe dating isn't in, in the cards for you right now. And that's okay because you are not where you want to be. And the only way to attract the right partner, the only way to attract someone into your life that you actually want in your life is by being the best version of yourself. Because right now, if you're broken and you're still drinking and you're unhappy with who you are, like that's what you're going to attract. So like right now, maybe you need to be in a season of no for dating, for other friends, for travel. If you want something that bad enough and you want something that's big enough, you have to understand that it's going to take work.
but it's actually easier than you think. Now, let's go back to lowering your action threshold. So schedule your grocery pickup ahead of time before your busy weekend so you can just go pick them up when Saturday comes or get them delivered to you. Pay the extra 5 or $10 to get food delivered to you so you don't have to go into the store and probably spend another 20 or $30 that you don't need or, or on stuff that you don't need, right? So like, I will rather pay for groceries to get delivered to me then spend more money at the grocery store, which we all know what's going to happen because when you go there, you're going to buy more stuff that you don't need, right? And that is how we lower our action threshold. I made sure that when I make my meals, I packed them up and I actually put them away and they're ready to go. I don't have to worry about them anymore. What do I like to do when I make my meals? I like to watch a movie. Now, I'm not watching the movie intently, but I like to play it in the background. All right, there's no winning without sacrifice. Right now, like we talked about, there will always be a sacrifice. Will the sacrifice be the goal that you want to achieve? Losing the 30 or 40 or 50 pounds, not getting the certification that you said you were going to get this year. Or will the sacrifice be late nights with your friends? Staying up on the weekends drinking. Maybe going to a party that you really wanted to go to. Like, Which sacrifice are you willing to actually do? Because staying out late nights with your friends it might be enjoyable for that moment. But you're telling yourself that your goals are not that important because guess what? Saturday morning's going to roll around. You're not going to feel up for the gym. Why? Because you're probably going to be a little bit hungover. Now, understand that you can still go out, sure. But like, if your rules are 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., I'm in bed. Guess what? Maybe dinner's only going to be 7 to 9. All right, guys, I'm out. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. And that's okay. No, actually, I'm, I'm not going to be drinking tonight. That's fine. You don't have to tell anybody. anybody else, you don't have to tell anybody Anything else besides that, and that's okay. Limit your social media if it takes away from what's important to you. I see you guys on social media. And honestly, without social media, we wouldn't be where we're at. I'm not calling you out. I'm not telling you, hey, get off social media. What I'm saying is be smart about it. I use social media not as a consumer, but as a producer. Because I am producing stuff for social media. I'm not on social media consuming I don't go there to see a lot of stuff. Honestly, you guys are the ones that pop up on my feed more than anybody else because I interact with you guys. But limit your social media if it's taken away from what's important to you. There are also apps that you can use to, to block it out. Go on your phones right now and you can look at your social media activity in the activity tracker. and You can see how many hours a day you are spending on social media. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a very useful tool, but it's that. It's a tool. So if you're wasting time on social media, spending half an hour on the toilet, scrolling through TikTok or Facebook when you could have got up and got a workout in 20 minutes at home, but you didn't do it, your social media is actually hurting you. Spend less time with people in general if it means you use them as an excuse to not put in the work. So if you tell yourself like, well, every weekend I have to go visit my mom and maybe you grew up in a Mexican household or an Indian household and they make food with seed oils. Understand that not only is that taking time away from you and your meal prep and what you said you were going to do, but it's actually negatively hurting the progress that you've made all week. You can say no. You can do a FaceTime with them. You can check in with them and say hi, but you don't have to go home every single weekend. And if you're always having dinner and it's the food that they make and it's not necessarily the healthiest option, speak up. Hey, listen, do you mind if I made dinner tonight? Or, hey, I want to try this awesome recipe that I, that I just have. Do you mind if we buy some groceries for it and try something different? They're not going to likely say no to you. In fact, they might feel relieved that they can actually take a night off. Speak up. Spend less time with people that are holding you back and spend more intentional time with the people that are actually you have to spend time with because they're there, right? Now, all of this, we've been talking about it for a little bit, but how do you set yourself up to win? How do we come up with that laser focus of what we're going to do, right? We have to make sure that it stays in the forefront of our mind. So if you want to focus the rest of this year, the rest of this month, the rest of the six, next six months on losing 15 pounds per se, like what is going to get you there? What are the steps you have to take? Log all your meals. Don't miss any workouts get your 10,000 steps. Like that is the ground game of what you need to do. Other stuff, absolutely, sure. But like if you do these things, if you do these three things, 
you're more than likely, percentage-wise, probably in the high 80s, to be honest, are going to achieve the goal that you want to. But yet we don't do that, and then three months pass, and then we still weigh what we weighed, or maybe we only lost five pounds, and then we get angry about it. We don't look back and reflect and realize that I didn't do the things I was supposed to do. Most people say they can commit, but then they're opening a beer 20 minutes later, or they're snoozing their alarm in the morning. Guys, remember, this is not just about like, hey, here are your workouts, best of luck to you. No, like there's a reason why we are progressing the way we're progressing. We talked about burning bridges the right way. We talked about the power of saying no. This is you saying yes to yourself. Like this is where we're at. You have to be willing to say yes to yourself. And you're going to be stuck daydreaming if you don't take action. So by now you have your list of what your goals are. I want you guys to circle one of those. Just one. Just circle one of those goals. And then start thinking, start talking, start strategizing in your mind. What do you have to do to get there? If it's a certification, okay, you have to do this many courses. It's going to take you this many hours. You have this much time. How many courses a week do you have to do? If it's putting on muscle, okay, that means I have to eat, eat extra protein and eat a little bit more than I normally do, which means I have to invest more money in protein, chicken, beef, you name it, right? And start prioritizing that and getting my workouts in and not missing any workouts or not missing any meals. If it's losing 20 pounds, okay, you know what? I need to actually hit 15,000 steps a day. All right, so if I'm going to do that, I have to make sure that I take out this useless thing in my calendar that I'm not even enjoying, right? So like, again, all the bad habits in our lives that we're doing, they're there because we are not effectively using our time. So are you actually devoted to achieving your goal or are you just interested in the idea of it? You have to be devoted. You have to be devoted because interesting things happen all the time, but you don't really hear about them. When you hear about stuff that is truly eye-opening, it's because somebody was freaking devoted to something and they made something happen for themselves. The success story that we see other people post about, or maybe p people in this group, like that person was devoted. You have just been interested. Now, what happens when you fail? Because let's just say you started on this journey and, and you have clarity of what you want your goal to be, but like maybe three weeks down the line, you have a beer, you miss your workouts, and all of a sudden you feel like, well, I'm starting over at zero. Like you're not. You have to keep coming back to your main goal even after getting distracted. That's all it was, a distraction. However, however, whatever it was that distracted you, whatever it was that made you fail, air quotes, pay attention to it. Mark it. Flag it. Analyze it. Oh, you know what? I, I told myself I was going to hit three to five workouts this week, and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I didn't even hit the gym because... I got busy watching TV with my friends because they all want to hang out at the house. All right, guess what? Like, that's going to happen again unless you do something about it. If you live in an environment with roommates and that's the norm, guess what? Maybe you need to find new roommates. Or if you live in, the, in, in, in your house and, like, the kids are always up late and you don't have a bedtime routine for them, guess what? Get a freaking bedtime routine for them and wind them down the right way so they fall asleep so you don't have this happen again next week. If after school, when you were leaving your college class, your buddies invited you out for a drink and you keep saying yes normally, you always say yes every Friday, they're going to do the same thing again next week. Are you going to say yes? Or are you actually going to start limiting your exposure to them so you don't even have to say no? Don't spend energy saying no if you can even avoid it. Right? Forgive yourself. You got off track. You just have to refocus. Write down what you need to do next time to get back on track, as well as write down what you need to avoid next time so you don't fall off track. Every moment is a fresh start to recommit to your plan. Every single day, you should wake up and tell yourself, This is what I'm going to achieve today because I have big goals in mind. It's never too late. The trick is to stay in the game and understand that it is going to take a while, but you are going to get there faster if you are doing the work intentionally. So again, what is your goal? And I'm, I'm going to ask you guys to share in a minute. So like, think about what that goal is. And then we're going to talk about how to break it down to smaller steps. And if you don't know what it is, we'll talk about it. 
what distractions do you need to cut out? And what do you need to add to your environment to help you win? If one of your goals is to be able to run a marathon, guess what? One of the things that you need to do a smaller step is hydrate every day. So what can you do to change your environment to make sure you hydrate? Maybe you have to buy four to five freaking pats of water pallets every single week and have them right by the door so you grab one every time you leave the house. That's an investment. But guess what? Just don't spend any money on Starbucks for the next month and you'll cover the water, I promise you. If you want to open up your business, guess what? That means stop being scared of taking steps out of your comfort zone. Maybe that means stepping out of your comfort zone. Maybe that means spending an hour to an hour and a half on YouTube researching stuff and then applying the stuff, not just watching videos endlessly. If you want to lose 10 to 15 pounds in the next year, what do we have to do? We have to hit four to five workouts a week. We have to get our 10,000 steps. We have to log and eat our meals. What else? All the things add up, right? So what do we need to add to our environment to help us win? Maybe the gym that we go to is over 30 minutes away and we never make it there because then we're late for work. Guess what? Find a gym that is on the way to work. Decide when you're going to go to the gym and follow through with it. 